everyone and welcome to Health Talk. I'm your host, Jill Fraley Dotson. A service of Pikeville Medical Center. Today on Health Talk, we have a very interesting program to discuss with you. Our focus is heart health and we have three guests with us today. Allow me to introduce Dr. Chase Reynolds. He is an electrophysiologist at Pikeville Medical Center, Reagan Linton, and her mother, Heather Ratliff. Hello everyone, welcome. Hi. How are you? Dr. Reynolds, let's start with you as we always do. We start with our physicians. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well I'm from here in Pikeville. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually born at Pikeville Medical Center. I went to high school and everything here in Pikeville. Went on to UK for undergrad, then uh, did medical school in Louisville. Then did my internal medicine residency, my cardiology fellowship, and my electrophysiology fellowships down in Florida. So tell us a little bit about what an electrophysiologist does. Well, we always kind of kid, we're the electricians of the heart. Within cardiology, um, you have kind of subspecialties that some people choose to pursue. The ones that most people know about are the interventional cardiologists. They're the, the plumbers deal with any type of blockage in the vessels of the heart. But there's a lot of electrical problems of the heart, um, both rhythms that are too fast and too slow. And that's when electrophysiologists come in. We do everything from uh, ablations to change the way the heart actually beats to putting in devices like defibrillators or pacemakers. Now, now that we understand that part of your job, let's talk a little bit about heart health and um, leading causes and things of that nature. Okay. Um, well, in general, heart health is the, the biggest killer, unfortunately, in the United States. One in four deaths in the U.S. is due to a heart-related disease. Um, that is true from birth to grave. Uh, obviously, the percentage of heart health issues are greater at later stages in life, but um, none of us is immune. That it's something that affects all of us to some degree, and so it's something we all need to be aware of. So young, old, male, female, really doesn't matter at all, does it? Nope, no, no, none of us are immune from it. Yeah, and we're definitely going to get into that in just a few moments. Um, let's talk about signs and symptoms of heart attacks because I think a lot of people uh, misunderstand what some of those are, but the truth is that there are so many different things that we need to look for. So, I mean, obviously everyone knows chest pain. That's the big thing that we all worry about. Um, you know, the, the chest pressure, especially when it radiates to your, to your arm, to your neck, that's kind of a telltale sign of one of the plumbing problems that can cause heart disease, um, a blockage of one of the coronary arteries. But there are a lot of other things as well that can be a sign of heart disease. Everything from having lightheadedness or passing out to feeling uh, short of breath, um, just losing the physical exertion we used to have, feeling like we don't have as much energy as we once did. These are all things that can point to a heart problem. The specific problem may vary, but all often lead back to the heart. Yeah. There's a very good reason that I ask you about the signs and symptoms and, and why we're discussing this today. I introduced them earlier. Reagan and Heather are with us today. Ladies, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, I would dare say most of you may think that we're here to talk to Heather maybe about heart issues, uh, not her daughter, but in fact, we are here to talk to Reagan today and to hear about her story and what has happened um, concerning her heart health. Reagan, why, would we talk, why are we talking to you today? I had a heart attack at 18 years old, my senior year of high school. Wow, that's not something that you hear at all, a heart attack at 18 years old, right before you were to graduate. Yes, I think it was a week or two before. Yeah, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, it doesn't matter, young, old, male, female, obviously Reagan being 18 years old, just before graduation, literally had a heart attack. She is so young. Um, what, what do you think about this, Dr. Reynolds? I mean, this is something that you just don't ever, hardly ever see. It's obviously not common. We normally think about heart disease as we get older in age. And like I said, you know, the, the one in four statistic is the, the kind of the birth to grave statistic. The mm -hmm. reality is, much higher percentage at older age, but even at a younger age. Um, we have a lot of patients who do have heart disease, and while we, we tend to always focus on our older population, even people Reagan's age have to be you know, aware of their bodies, aware of things that could be signs of an underlying heart problem. Reagan, had you ever had any issues before that no. you were aware of? I had actually never even been to the emergency room with an illness before. Anything at all? No. Picture of health? or what would appear to be mm -hmm. the picture of health. Take us back to that day, that morning, that you, that you had your heart attack. It was a Monday morning, and I was getting ready for school, and it was the Monday after I'd been to my senior prom on Saturday, and then Sunday was Mother's Day, and I'd been with my family in Lexington. I felt completely fine. 
and then Monday I woke up and I was putting my hair back in a ponytail and I started to feel like a weird sensation, I guess, in the middle of my chest. And it's not what you would think of. You would feel like, you know, if something was that terribly wrong, I guess. And um, I was nauseous and threw up and I thought I was dehydrated. But mom had to go to school and I just laid back down and I had taken some nausea medicine but I knew something did not feel right. So I Googled on my phone, dehydration and chest pain. Mm -hmm. And it said like fatal, you know, get checked out. So I called my mom back and she came back and got me and I went to the ER. So after a big weekend, mm -hmm. you know, moms always tend to think that, you know, you just want to maybe get it out of school. Oh, you call for mom, sure. I don't feel mm -hmm. good. You know, I'm tired. I've had Mother's Day, we've had prom. But when you got that call, did, did you think that initially, Heather? No. Well, of course. And I remember telling her, Reagan, you have eight days of school. <laughs> We're almost finished. You're almost finished. You know, she was getting ready for her finals and she didn't want to stay home from school. She told me that she needed to be there by 11 o'clock mm -hmm. if she could just lay down for a few minutes. Yeah. And so we had given her some um, something to help her. She'd been a little bit, she was throwing up and just didn't feel good, but she wasn't. I and mean, I never thought for one minute she was having a heart attack. You right. know, it wasn't that kind of thought. Right. And so I actually got in my car and was going, I work um, at Va Valley and I was driving toward there and believe it or not, I was within a minute of where I lose my cell signal. And she called me and she said, mom, I Googled it and I think I need to go to the hospital. And at first I'm like, Reagan. And then I'm like, okay, I'll, and I just turned around and thank God I went home yeah. and got her and we went to the ER. and. She might go and tell you from, from there what happened, but it was very fast from, from there. So you're in the emergency room, have to be a lot of things going on, very fast paced, trying to figure mm -hmm. out what's happening, probably a lot of questions. So walk us through what happened when you got there. Um, actually, I don't remember she a lot of it. She doesn't actually have a lot of a re recollection of that. We got there about 9.05, mm -hmm. I, I know that. And um, I know that because I texted my sister just to tell mm -hmm. her that Reagan was sick and not feeling well. And we went through the normal triage, got into a room. Um, they had, she was on a monitor. We had talked to a nurse. We had not met a doctor yet or anything. It was very, it all happened very quickly. And um, I know they, the, the nurse just said, we're gonna draw some blood and start an IV and see what's going on. And from, from that, um, I was talking to Reagan and um, she didn't respond back to me very quickly and I, I was like, Reagan, and nothing, and then she started, she was laying on the bed, but and she was shaking. And I initially thought she was having a seizure. Mm -hmm. And so I yelled for the, um, for the nurses, and they, when you do that, they come very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and so they came running in the room, and they immediately started asking me, you know, did she have a history of epilepsy? Had she taken any kind of drugs? Had she been drinking alcohol? Had she done, you know, anything like that? And of course I said, no, nothing, nothing, she was, Five minutes ago, we were talking about the prom, and um, from that point, they once the PA realized what was going on, I, I had to leave. They, they asked me to leave because it was something a lot more serious yes. than just. And when just I being saw tired. a crash cart, right, I'm like, what? What is happening here? Because I thought she was just nauseous, dehydrated, dehydrated, nothing. So yes, it happened very, very quickly, and thank God, you know, the, that we were where we were. You're talking about being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. No. He mm -hmm. put her there for a reason. Dr. Reynolds, um, we heard the nurses and physicians have a nickname for Reagan and a very um, important nickname. Can you share that with us? Yeah, we, uh, we generally just call her the miracle girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reality is with, with what Reagan had going on at that moment, mm -hmm. that was a specific abnormal heart rhythm called ventricular tachycardia. Um, when that occurs, about 2% of people will survive that, assuming that they don't have some type of medical prevention device in place. Um, so, you know, it really was just a lot of luck, to be 100% honest, that she was in the ER when this occurred, because had it occurred outside of the hospital setting, uh, we probably wouldn't be sitting here having this show today. And that's really hard to wrap your mind around. Heather, I know as a mother that, that it's still probably very daunting when you think about mm -hmm. those moments at the ER when you, you take her in for what you think is di dehydration, just a little bit of you know tiredness, and then you see all the things that you just described. Mm -hmm. 
And this is your 18 year old daughter who has been the picture of health and had no symptoms or signs or warnings or anything. How did, how did the both of you process this? Because I know it took a little bit of time for Reagan to really fully understand because like you said, you don't remember a lot of, mm -hmm. of that time. Gosh, all I remember is praying. I, all I remember in the ER a lot is the chaplain was there very quickly. And I remember telling him, you need to pray for my daughter, pray for my daughter, because we don't know what's wrong, you know. And uh, the nurses were, they were wonderful, wonderful. And as far as tape wrapping my mind around it, probably not until the next day, because I didn't realize, they didn't tell me that day, everything that, you know, that they had to shock her and that, you know. When you were so, asked to leave. Right, those right. Things I didn't that see, happened. I didn't see those things happen. And so I didn't realize that she had actually been that serious. That she coded. Yeah, right, exactly. I didn't know that until probably the next day, I guess. Maybe later that night. But that was like the longest day of my life. So it, it could have been that night and I just don't yeah. don't recall. Everything and happens so fast. Still it's hard to realize it. Uh, undoubtedly. My goodness. Dr. Reynolds, due to the nature of Reagan's conditions and because she is so young, some special provisions had to be made for her care. Um, tell us what sorts of things had to happen. Well, you know, we, we obviously did our full cardiac work up here at Pikeville. Right. Um, various tests needed to be done to sort of figure out what's going on. You know, we, we knew the punchline of the, of the story. We, we knew what rhythm had occurred, but the question is why? You know, the question's always why, how do we keep it from happening again? So we did our full cardiac workup. We felt pretty confident we, we had a kind of a grasp of what was going on, but there were still um, some unquestion or unanswered questions, if you will. Given her age, and uh, you know, she had really just turned 18, we consulted with some of our pediatric cardiology colleagues up at Cleveland Clinic, um, and ultimately decided that really just in, in her best interest, out of kind of doing a complete 100% workup for the patient, we would send her up there, let them do a little bit more investigation. Yeah, and we stayed very involved. Yeah, we, we were involved the entire time. Um, and to be 100% honest, you know, at, at the end of the day, they concluded the same thing that we had concluded as far as what was going on, what needed to be done, which um, ultimately resulted in having a, a defibrillator placed um, to protect her from future events. But we, we, were with, we were with them the, the entire time as far as talking daily back and forth, and they reached the same conclusion we did. We just wanted to have you know, our pediatric colleagues take a look and make sure that they didn't see something that we somehow weren't seeing. Right. Always good to have as many sets of eyes as possible when dealing with something like this. You mentioned a defibrillator. Mm -hmm. Is that the procedure that, that you had? Mm -hmm. You have a defibrillator? Yes, that's yeah. right underneath my arm. Uh -huh. It kind of sticks out, but not, it doesn't bother me as much as I anticipated, but it's just, I don't remember not having it now. You know, it's just. It's become a part of you mm -hmm. and it saves your life. It saved your life and continues to. The issue with these rhythms, these deadly types of rhythms mm -hmm. is that often, we, you know, I always explain the defibrillator to people by saying it's kind of like a home insurance policy. You still do everything you can to keep your home from catching on fire. You want to protect you know, what you have. And we do the same thing with Reagan and every other patient who has those types of rhythms. We have her on medications to try to prevent it from happening again. But if in spite of our best efforts, that rhythm were to occur again, like I said, most people who have this rhythm, assuming that it occurs outside of the hospital, don't survive. Right. So we always put the insurance policy in place, in this case a defibrillator, so that she's protected if she were to have this rhythm again, even on the medications. Her particular device is one that is um, much better suited for someone her age. It's called the subcutaneous defibrillator. The idea simply being that um, the, I hate to even refer to it as older because in many patients it's the appropriate defibrillator still, but um, the, the type of defibrillator most people think of is a defibrillator or a device that shocks the heart that has leads within the bloodstream. It allows us to do some additional things if needed, which is more relevant for um, an older population, but also comes with some concerns, especially for patients that have it you know, long term. So in Reagan, she has a device that is on her side, the lead comes around the chest and there's nothing inside the bloodstream. And for someone that, you know, we're looking at 70, 80 years of having this device, that's often the better option. 
Certainly. It's just amazing that, that she's 18 years old, 19 now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and has a defibrillator. I mean, mm -hmm. that's something that's even still, when you would tell somebody that, they think, really? That's, that's just amazing. Um, before you were transferred to the Cleveland Clinic, Greg, and I know that there were a lot of things going on, but there, um, you know, when you leave your home and you leave a place that you feel safe, it gets even more stressful. I mean, all, you have this going on with your heart, but then the insurity, I think, of, of everything else. But there's something that happened before you left the hospital. Yes, I uh, ended up having to wait uh, longer than we thought on a bed at Cl in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And it just happened that I felt like this time that I was just going to be sitting around waiting actually ended up, I got baptized instead. And I felt very strongly that I did not want to leave my home without being baptized before I went to Cleveland. And that's what really got me through. But, and even with that, there had to be, Dr. Reynolds, certain precautions taken when that baptism occurred at the hospital. Of course. You know, I mean, there, there was still at that point some degree of uncertainty mm -hmm. as to the actual cause that triggered it all. We, we knew what had happened and what we were doing about it, but we were still kind of in the middle of a workup. And we we're always very cautious until we have, you know, a definitive answer and in her case a defibrillator in place to protect her. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, no request is too small, no request is too big. So we, you know, we made accommodations. Um, we more or less kind of set up our, our chapel as a ER room. Mm -hmm. we, we moved the crash cart down there. Um, I happened to be on call the night that um, she had requested to be baptized, so um, I didn't want to interfere with anything, so I, I kind of stayed out of the way, but I, I, you know, I came in and was just kind of in my office in case something were to, were to happen, and we you know, made arrangements for her to get baptized that evening. Everything went you know, without, mm -hmm. without any problems. And, uh, so you get to Cleveland. Now, I know that you made some really good friends while you were there. Yes, I met a girl on my floor. We were the, the youngest people there by probably like 70 years. <laughs> Maybe not 70 years, but 60 at least. <laughs> Named um, Kristen McAllister. And I think she just got discharged recently. But mm -hmm. all this time that I've been at home doing better, going to school, she had still been in the hospital yeah. with um, juvenile arthritis. Was the original cross, yeah. which, which turned into transverse myelitis. And She's having a lot of problems, but it was she was an angel when, when we were there, and her her parents were going through the same thing that my husband and I were going through right. with young children, and uh, she and Reagan are, are still friends today, and they were the the picture of health to the other patients there. Oh, and, sure. Because like Reagan said, you know, most student, most patients aren't 18 years old, and on the heart. On the heart in floor. The heart floor. Mm -hmm. The cardiac yeah. units. Um, how? In the meantime, you know, you were there with her, Heather. I know you never left. Mm -hmm. um, how how did you have, how were you able to deal with that, I guess? I mean, I can't even begin to 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 think how you were coping and dealing with all that, mm -hmm. being there. Um, being here in Pikeville helped a lot because my family was here. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister, who lives in Florida, actually, Reagan, the, she was in the ER about what 9:30 that morning mm -hmm. is when when they actually had to shot 9:38. I'll never forget that 9:38. And my sister got on a plane at noon and was here before the doctors made their evening rounds, I think. Um so I had lots of support here for my family and I know we almost were re the it, the ICU people said that they never had anyone so popular in the <laughs> ICU. <laughs> I'm and, sure. And uh so we had a lot of support, a lot of people who, who love her very much and, and were, you know, just wanted to find out what exactly happened and make sure that it didn't happen again. And uh, it's not been easy, I, I, under, I will admit, but um, I don't know, it's... I think the most important thing that I had to decide was not asking, like, why did this happen to me? You know, why, why, right. why? But this is what happened. This is how I have to deal with it and get over it. And move on. Dr. Reynolds, now that the procedure is completed, she has her defibrillator, all of that is in place, what challenges could she face at this point? Well, you know, like I had mentioned, there's always the risk there that the rhythm could happen again. Mm -hmm. That's why she has the defibrillator. Um, everyone in this room, I feel very confident, <laughs> hopes it never happens again. Yeah. And we have her on medications to try to prevent that from occurring. Um, but with, with the electrical problems of the heart, with the the arrhythmias that can be fatal. In a majority of cases, we can give medications to decrease the chances of them happening, but we can't do anything specifically to 100% stop them from happening again. That's just 
at least with current medical knowledge, not possible. So, you know, moving forward, in all honesty, we don't think she's going to have a lot of problem at all. Mm -hmm. um, she's doing well. Her overall cardiac function is normal. Everything's looking good. But at the same time, she does have the defibrillator. She's protected if it were to happen again. We expect, though, that she'll have absolutely normal well, life moving forward with, with the exception of a, I guess a small piece of hardware that she hadn't really planned <laughs> on having. Well, you know what? That's okay. I think she's doing beautifully with okay. it. She says now it's just part of her and she doesn't even know that it's there. At the time of Reagan's heart attack, she was graduate, had just been to prom, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready to graduate from high school. And you did get to walk on your high school graduation, yes. as I recall, which we were all so thankful for. Um, but f college was coming up in the fall and, and you were going to Transylvania University in Lexington. Did those plans change? No. Thankfully, <laughs> I know a lot of people. That that was the hard part. Right. Yeah, that Let, was letting but, her go. But that would have been hard even if she hadn't had a massive heart attack or a major heart attack. So it just kind of made it even worse. But yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm lucky that my parents let me go. I guess, but yeah. they weren't gonna. You know, after surviving something like that, you know. Who would say, you know, you can't go do right. what you've mm -hmm. always planned on? And I think that's how we've looked at it, really. And that's how that's helped me. I felt like, um, you know, that she's here for a reason now. And uh, so God is going to make sure that she's going to be okay. Well, what a wonderful testimony she has. Because mm -hmm. I think when, when things like this are put into our lives, right. we, like Reagan said, you know, it's hard not to question why, but you do wonder why. Mm -hmm. And you never know when her story and her success is going to lead and be a testimony to someone else who mm -hmm. may or may not be going through something. And you never know when, when another person is going to be 18, 19 years old and you get to travel to Pikeville, or visit Pikeville Medical Center or travel to Cleveland to mm -hmm. maybe be a witness for those people to let them know that, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be okay. Well, certainly so. I know that you're having a wonderful time at college. So Love it. It, anything going on different today? What's your normal life going on? I, it's like, to me, like it never even happened. So it's yeah. strange to come back home with all these people that like, you know, are eager like, to take care of me and watch over me. But at school, it's like, you know, not an issue. You but, were telling us before we started when you uh, had some social time in the beginning of your fall semester that there was a game. Yes. I get to know you type game. Tell us a little bit about there that. There were so many icebreakers the first few weeks of school, and there was one called Two Truths and a Lie. And you'd say, you know, I'm Reagan, I'm from Pikeville, and my favorite color is pink. But mm -hmm. if my favorite color was blue, you know, that would be my lie. Yeah. So I would always say, you know, I'm Reagan, my favorite color is blue, and I had a heart attack. And, you know, of course, like, they're going to think that I would lie about something so crazy. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, actually, my favorite color is this or that. And it was always funny and to And I did see have a heart face. attack yeah. just yeah. a few months ago. <laughs> And I'm sitting here, and I'm I'm perfectly fine at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And I have to say, for for Chase, he, um, I was at first I was insistent. I thought she needed a medical alert bracelet, right. you know, oh, and I sure. really wanted to make sure. And he said, "Trust me." He said, "If something were to happen and that defibrillator did work, they would call 911. You won't have to worry about anyone knowing what was wrong with her." <laughs> and he he said, "You don't need to, you know, she doesn't need to be labeled." He said, right. because there's absolutely nothing wrong with her now. Yeah, and I think my, my mom and my aunt, they were so, at the time, they're like, you're sick, you're sick, you need to tell people so they'll know to watch out for you. But me and Chase are like, you know, I'm not sick. You know, I was, <laughs> like, for a couple of weeks, but I'm going to be okay. And yeah. now yeah. I'm just myself again. But you understand how mom is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we texted Chase, actually, from, we were in Florida, and she wanted to ride we were at Walt Disney World, and she wanted to do all the rides. Mm -hmm. And I was insistent. It says plainly here, you know, with heart problems, you should not ride this and everything. And she's like, I'm just going to text Chase. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Dr. Reynolds, and which now we're so close. You we, become family. We become friends. Well, actually, we are distant mm -hmm. family, but but we are like friends now. And he he texted her back and said, That's perfectly fine. She can ride anything that she wants to. <laughs> and uh, so we were like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, she, he is her biggest cheerleader. And. He lets, he's the reason that she gets to do a lot of things. It's wonderful to be able to develop those kind of relationships yes. mm -hmm. with the people who are taking care of your most precious gift. Yes. And we actually went to Cleveland for the last time mm -hmm. in September, mm -hmm. I think, because um, the doctors there, um, th there's nothing that they could do for us that, that Chase can't do here. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we don't really have to go there anymore. Certainly wonderful to have that type of medical attention right here at home, to you know that you don't have to travel anywhere else to make sure she is well taken care of.
Dr. Reynolds, a very valuable lesson in everyone's story, and certainly this one today has all sorts of lessons that can be learned and things that we can be reminded of. But what is your message about taking the best possible care of the heart? Well, obviously, we all need to do the things that get preached to us on television by probably every doctor we've ever seen. You know, part of it is always on us to watch what we eat, stay in shape, you know, try to do all the things we know um, help our overall heart health. But the bigger story here, I think, is really that we also need to kind of be in tune to our bodies. We need to be aware when something doesn't feel right. Um, chest pain's one thing to look out for, but um, something as simple as, like we mentioned earlier in the, sh uh, the show, being lightheaded, passing out, mm -hmm. feeling uh, an irregular heartbeat, feeling palpitations in your heart, um, being short of breath, having all of a sudden a loss of the ability to exercise the way you once did. These are all things that can actually be a sign of an underlying cardiac problem. And even if we are you know, young and in, in great health, we're not immune. Right. So we need to be aware of those things. And if, if there's a concern, call us. You know, we, we can take a look at it all and see what's going on, but we, you know, we don't know if, if you don't see us. Yeah, certainly sounds like Pipewell Medical Center was definitely ready for, or for Reagan's emergency situation. And it, as we close, give us a brief overview of exactly how the Heart Institute is completely prepared. Uh, so we, we really have the, the full, kind of I guess you say entourage of um, cardiac specialties available. Everything from, the, of course, the, what we consider general cardiologists. We also have heart failure specialists, interventional cardiologists, electrophysiologists cardiothoracic and vascular surgeons, you know, any type of cardiac or vascular issue that you may have, we have a specialist that can address that. We also have kind of gone above and beyond within the department um, in terms of getting special accreditation, which both obviously serves to kind of solidify what we're doing, but also pushes each of us individually to stay on top of things, to maintain the accreditation. It requires both the individual physicians and the Heart Institute as a whole to make sure we're staying on the cutting edge of cardiovascular care. Uh, we have special accreditation in chest pain and atrial fibrillation. Uh, we have uh, an imaging accreditation for echocardiography um, and a variety of other accreditations that honestly I, I can't remember the, all the specifics on. The, the, the list keeps getting longer so it's hard to recite them all. Mm -hmm. Certainly we are ready. Or any opportunity or situation or emergency that presents itself at Pipeline Medical Center. We are completely ready. It's been an unbelievable discussion and opportunity today to let everybody know that heart disease and heart issues can not only affect those that we think are the normal people, the older generation or at least middle age, but also the young ones too. At 18 years old, being a heart attack survivor, having a defibrillator, certainly you have earned the uh, the title Miracle Girl and we are thrilled with your progress and wish you all the best. Heather and Reagan, thank you so much for being here. If you would like to learn more about Heart, the Heart Institute at Pikeville Medical Center, certainly if you have any issues, you can call the Heart Institute at 606-218-3570 and uh, we will point you in the right direction, of course, Pikeville Medical Center, Heart Institute doing wonderful things. Dr. Chase Reynolds, thank you so much for what you have done for Reagan and all of your colleagues and everybody there that has taken care of her because what we do at the hospital speaks volumes when you get to sit down and have discussions like this to see the friendships that have occurred and undoubtedly you'll be close for years to come. Thank you all very much. For Pikeville Medical Center, we wanna thank you for joining us. Pikeville Medical Center, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, I'm your host, Jill Fraley-Dotson. Good day.